Hi, yeah. So we're into chapter 19 of the book of Acts and Paul is in Ephesus. And this whole chapter has me thinking about how we respond to the power of God. So just stick with me here. So first of all, Paul uh, meets these believers and he asks them if they've received the Holy Spirit. And they're like, Holy Spirit, what Holy Spirit? No one's even ever told us about the Holy Spirit. Um, so they have this chat about how they were baptised and he baptises them in the name of Jesus. And it says that when he laid hands on them, that they received the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues and they began to prophesy. Um, and then it goes on to talk about Paul preaching in the synagogue and then the synagogue people got annoyed with him. So they started preaching in this lecture hall instead. And then it says that God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even like handkerchiefs and aprons of his that had, or even that had just touched him were able to cure people of their illnesses like what is that about that is weird um but this extraordinary stuff is going on around paul and people are seeing god's power at work and some people are just like great get me healed this is amazing and other people are like great i want a bit of that and they want to grab some of that power for themselves so we have this story of these seven sons of Sceva, of this Jewish priest, and, and they're trying to da drive out demons in the name of Jesus. And like these demons just replied back and say, like, Paul, we know about, but who the heck are you? And, and they beat them up. They beat these guys up. The demons like, are like, yeah, you don't have any power over us. So you're just pretending you do. Whereas Jesus, he has real power. Paul, he has real power because of his faith in Jesus. But you're just using words. You don't actually have any of that faith or any of those connections. Um, and yeah, that sounds weird, doesn't it? Like evil spirits, like beating someone up. A little bit weird, a little bit scary. I don't know how you respond and how you feel when you read stuff like that in the Bible. Um, but then it also leads to this real faith and real response and real repentance. People like turning away from their old lives when they see such power, when they see that Jesus and the name of Jesus really does have that kind of authority. Um, so we've got people who are like turning away from sorcery and burning their scrolls and just truly properly turning away from their old lives. And, and then it tells us about this riot that happens because of some of this stuff. Because you see, if Jesus really does have power, then he has power to change lives and also to change culture. And some people can be a little bit threatened by that. So it all kicks off when this silversmith is like, hang on, if everyone's going to be worshipping this God and everyone's hearing that God's like this real living, powerful being and isn't just this like metal thing we can create out of silver so that people have to pay us the money, then we're going to be out of a job. And so he starts kind of getting people riled up about this and getting people panicking that all oh, these 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 people, these followers of the way, these Christians, they're messing with our culture and they're messing with our income and we don't like it. Um, and it turns into like this full on riot. And and like a bit like the chap we looked at uh, last time, we've got this situation where this riot kind of spirals and everyone's getting involved and they drag some of the believers um, in front of them to, and, and like half of the crowd don't even know why they're there. But they've all kind of got caught up in this hype. And then it says that part of in all of this assembly, like the city clerk quietens them all down. And is like, come on, fellow Ephesians, we don't need to worry because everybody knows about our great God and, and our great um, silver idols that we worship and, and that it's all real and it's all fine. Um, and actually, if you've got a real problem, sort it out properly, go to court. If it's not a real problem, shh, before you get us in trouble. And everyone kind of chills out and goes their separate ways. But it just kind of shows us, doesn't it, that if God really does have power, then he has power to change the world that we live in. Like people feel threatened by God's power because God's power is real. And I wonder what the real threat could be if we really grasped God's power today. Like what are the false idols in our world that are messing with the way God wants the world to be. Maybe that might be the false idols of money in our own lives and chasing after that over a relationship with God or the false idols of popularity and chasing over getting enough likes and followers on our Insta and all that sort of stuff instead of pursuing God. 
maybe it's false idols of image or of looking after our bodies and health and all of that sort of stuff and making that the most important thing rather than knowing who God says we are and knowing the real transforming power of having that relationship with God. So how do you respond to knowing that God is a God of power, a God who can act in the world today, a God who can do stuff, who can heal, who can do supernatural signs, who speaks to his people? Do you expect to see God at work? Do you hope to see God at work? Are you excited by that? Are you scared by it? Now, I'm not saying we should be people who chase the power. We don't want to be like those sons of that priest who are like all about the power and seeing the stuff happen but not about the relationship with God, that doesn't work. The power and the signs are there to help people to know God and trust him and love him and know that he is real and he cares and he does stuff. We don't just chase the signs for the sake of it or for the fun of it, but they're there to help us to know who God is. So how do you respond to the power of God? Do you dismiss it? Do you hide from it? Or are you excited by it? Are you willing to have your life changed? by the power of God.